Have you ever red grade before? No. Okay, so perfect. By the time we're done today, you're gonna know how to set and read grade. We're just gonna go over the basics. It's not gonna be anything complicated, but it's gonna be enough to get you by on a job site. So when somebody tells you that they need to cut grade or add, you're gonna know exactly how to set up a laser and get everything done. Morning, Sam. All right, let me show you the basics first before we get too far into this. Let me explain this job to you real quick, okay? So what we're doing is right here where Sam just walked in, we're having water problems come into the garage. And you can actually see where the grade where you're standing right now, Alex, is just a little bit higher. You know, you can eagle eye it, yeah. but when we're on a job site, we can't eagle eye it because then we need to actually verify grades because once we leave, if there's a problem, it costs us money to come back and fix it. So that's why we set all the grades ahead of time. And then that way, if a customer ever asks, hey, you know, how, how are the grades set? We know exactly what we did and what the elevations and the measurements are. So it's pretty important that we get this straight. But today, what we're going to be doing is taking this area right here between you and me. We're going to cut this down because right now all the water flows down and right into the garage. So here's the short and skinny of it. Some of you are not going to like this video at all. And some of you are going to absolutely love this video. And here's why. Because this is going to be a two-parter. This first part today, we're going to teach Alex how to read grade on a real job site. All we're really going to be doing is sharing that knowledge with him but more importantly, sharing it with you guys. So if you have crew members that have never read grade before, this is the video you're going to sit them down in front of and have them watch. Now, if you already know how to read grade, you're gonna probably get bored or maybe get a refresher course or better yet, show them, tell me what I missed in the comments down below. The second part is all action. This is where we test out everything that Alex has learned to this point. He's gonna hop in a skid loader, he's gonna be running a four in one bucket, he's never ran hand foot controls in a loader, so we're gonna see how he does with that. He's never ran a four in one bucket, so we're gonna be throwing him right out, of the, right out of the frying pan and into the fire in the next one. So if you like action, you're gonna love part two. If you like knowledge, you're gonna love this part. If you like action and knowledge and the dirt monkey, you're gonna love everything that you see coming at you on YouTube. Let's get into today's video. Okay, so let's actually talk about the three main components to a laser. First one is the laser itself. This is called a rotary laser because it spins and rotates. There's line lasers and straight lasers that just, they shoot just at one straight line, right? And those are really designed just for interior work. Like if you're trying to set sheetrock or you wanna get your railing when you're building it or whatever, cabinet straight. This is more of an outside laser, but it can function as an inside laser as well. It has that capability. One of the things with these is um, the lasers nowadays will self-level to a certain extent. So, you know, in the old days, and you may come across an older laser or even a transit, which is an eyepiece, you've got to level those right to the T before they'll even turn on, okay? So I don't want you to get confused where you go ahead and you hit the go button and the laser actually won't fire up because if it doesn't fire up you're either too far out of level or you have a laser that doesn't self level and so you've got to get it dead on now if you have a laser that doesn't self level you'll have a little bubble somewhere on the laser and that will tell you now here's a great indicator of just how far off we are if you look at the top down right here you can see how that spinning part is not in the dead center middle right that means that the transit or the laser itself is kittywampus this way and actual level is more this way and it's compensating for it. That just helps you understand that. Now there's a lot of things that you can get into some pretty advanced functions on these. We're just gonna go basics. So we've got underneath the, the rotary laser is the, is the tripod, okay? So if somebody says grab the, the, the laser, you know, you're gonna automatically think, okay, there's more than just the laser. I'm not just gonna grab this unit. I'm gonna probably make sure that I got the tripod. And then you got your stick. And you wanna grab that. And then you got a receiver. All right, so that's four components, not three Alex, but whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm Polish, I don't have to count, right? So 
with that being said, here's where understanding how to read a laser gets to be funky and slow me down if I'm going too fast because I don't want to lose you on this. When you're reading grade, when you go down in grade, the numbers on the stick go up. It's fast, backwards, and confusing as all get out. Even for old timers, if you haven't done it in a while, you got to refresh that memory. But let me just demonstrate. Let me show you. We're actually going to read and show you exactly what it means. And then we're going to talk about laser positioning because where you position it on a job site is huge. And then we're going to talk about some of the other basics that you need to understand. Like don't ever stand in front of the laser when you're trying to measure, right? Because that I see that happening all the time. Guys will put their back to it and then they're like, why can't I get anything? So let's turn the receiver on the big green go button and you've got two measurements on here. Do you see that? So you got a volume adjustment and then you've got a fine tune and then you've got a bigger tune, right? So this is your compensation. This is on the bigger setting right now. This gives you a larger receiving area. And this right here, Alex, is where you actually receive your signal from the laser itself. So go ahead and put it on top of the, the box we're just going to use this as a demonstration. Now adjust your receiver up and down until you hear a beep. So I just want you to get familiar with the basics of how these numbers read. There you go. So, so now your receiver is telling you to go up just a little bit and you can actually see the green line. There you go. I don't know why it shut off. Some lasers will actually um, not just shut off, but it will give you a solid tone when you hit that line. And that's important to know because it's an audible signal. Now this one might do it. I don't know why it didn't do it. What's our number read on the stick, Alex? So our number is two, two. foot and then we're underneath the nine. So we're at about two foot, eight and three quarters. So this stick reads in three quarters. So we've got, so that's nine, nine and a quarter, nine and a half, nine and three quarters, 10. But we're under the nine. Here's our, our defined line. So we're two foot eight and three quarters. And one of the things to make sure is you always hold the stick straight up and down. Because if you if you put that receiver on up at the 14 foot mark or the 12 foot mark, and you hold that stick just a little bit off, your numbers will be off by a quarter to a half an inch, right? Because it's just like way up in the air and then you're angling it and it's just gonna throw everything off. You still with me? Yeah. Okay, so now, what do you think is going to happen when you read the grade on the ground? Are the no Which way are the numbers going to go? Uh, up. Yes. You're right. It took me a minute to think. Even See? I've been doing this for 20-some years, and I still got to go. So put, put the stick on the ground. Now we have our benchmark. Just in this example, was 2 foot, 8 and 3 quarters, right? Yeah. So now we're going to find out how much lower you are off from the transit box. And the, the, the difference is the change in elevation. Going just a little bit. On this laser, you can actually see the green line, which is kind of nice. On other lasers, you won't. All right, so we're right there. And let's let's pull that laser up one. Let's pull the stick up one and lock it into place. That'll help us read. All right, so what's our new number? All right, so what's the difference between those two? You we're at two foot eight and three quarters, and now we're at three foot eight and a quarter. So we've got 11 and yeah. a half inches. Yep. So we are 11 and a half inches lower. Our number went up, but our grade went down. Yeah. See how confusing that can be? So as we're looking at this, We've got to make sure that we just understand these basics when you're out reading it off of long distances. It's easy to forget these numbers. So a handy thing is a piece of paper 
you write down your benchmark because we're going to set up a real benchmark because we're shooting a real job site now and we're going to make sure that all of our elevations stay the same because we well, actually at some jobs where we have to go from day to day and we can't leave a laser set up we'll actually put a dot in the ground and then we have to reestablish off from that same point a new elevation every single day here's a don't once you set this laser up don't move it because you then have to start all your numbers back over again anytime this laser gets moved bumped altered or changed you have to start all fresh over again you can't even if you bump it, you can't just go grab it and put it back in and spin because now you could be off by a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, and it may not be a big deal in a short distance like this, but when we're shooting out a thousand feet across a field, it's gonna be it's gonna make a huge difference because now you're gonna be off by feet way far off. Our goal is to make cut the grade below that pad over there. Let's talk about laser positioning on a job site. We just talked about how you can never move a laser, bounce it around from spot to spot, unless you're ready to recalibrate all your numbers. So if you wanna set it up, what you try to pick a spot on a job site that captures your total job site, but stays out of the way, okay? Now on this job site, we're going to be cutting this grade down and we've gotta capture the grade from here. And one of the other things that we haven't discussed yet, Alex, is the this building here and this building here, okay? Part of that is we've gotta be able to get the grades to flow away from all structures. So we're trying to get it to flow away from that, but we're also trying to get it to flow away from this building right here, okay? And so that means that the smart move would be to cut some of this down to split the difference in the water flow. So we don't wanna just direct it all in one spot because then that creates a washout. The more avenues, areas that we can get water to flow away, the less. So when we talk about laser positioning, we wanna be able to set the laser up in one spot. Right there is probably gonna be the best spot because it allows us to capture all of the grades from all of the different directions without ever moving the laser. If we put the laser anywhere else, we would be obstructed by buildings or we just wouldn't be able to capture all of the grates. So we want to pick so that Alex spot very carefully. A laser for the first time on his own. He's using the legs, the extension on the legs to level it out, just to eyeball it to get it as close as possible. Go ahead and hit the go button and let's see if she, if you're tight enough in. And now she will She's slowly moving. There you go. All right, we got it. You got, we got the laser on so we know we're level enough. Let's go get our benchmark read. And then let's figure out where, once we read our benchmark, let's actually come up with a number that we're gonna shoot for out in the middle to be lower then. And then we'll get started actually doing that. How far else do you want the benchmark to go? Your benchmark is the is going to be right here. So this benchmark is the number that we're aiming for that we're going to use. So we're going to use the actual concrete pad because the if it rains or something or somebody kicks some dirt that that can change. The concrete pad won't isn't as likely to change. So do we got a beat? Yeah. Let's bring her down so we can hear that beep once. All right. So right about there. We're good. All right. So what is that number right now, Alex? Six foot. Two and three quarters of an inch. Six, two and three quarters. So this is where you probably would take some notes on this thing, right? Six foot two, three quarters, because you're not gonna remember that all day long because we're gonna be throwing a lot of numbers at you. So you got your phone, you can take a note on it. Yep. So your benchmark is six foot two and three quarters. Because we got more numbers coming at you in just a moment. So I told you we got more numbers coming at you. Here's the next set of numbers that you need for just general water and pitch to control um, runoff. It's one inch of drop per eight foot of run. 
okay that's a good number to remember just ingrain that one permanently in your mind one inch of drop for every eight feet of run strike so extend your rod all the way up as high as you can get her to go because we want to see where we're at this should be a 16 foot rod i believe yep all right so we got a 16 foot rod perfect now we're gonna go yep just set it set the rod out and lay it down gently because you got the receiver on there from your benchmark out to your work zone okay so now you know that's 16 feet right the end of that rod so anywhere in that neck of the woods how much lower are you gonna have to be we're 16 feet away from our benchmark how much how many inches lower would we be 16 feet out Two. exactly so now set your let's go see what we're reading because now we're going to see how far off we are but we know the next note that you're going to take in your phone is where we've got to go to okay? okay so if we need to go two inches lower than our benchmark what's the number going to be on our stick uh six foot and three quarters of an inch yep yep because we're now dropping the stick down actually no we're bass backwards remember we're going to go up. Yeah. yes so it's gonna be 16 or six feet four and three quarters of an inch right because we were at six foot two and three quarters yeah. right yeah. so we added two inches to six foot two and three quarters and that gives us six foot four and three quarters so that's the elevation that we want to hit over there so you better write that down so you see how complicated all these numbers can get when you don't take notes on them and that way you've got a, a record of it and then that's something that you can easily transfer to somebody else if you're ever working on a site if you are gone or you get called off you can just send them the notes on everything it's just a nice little thing so let's see where we're actually at out there on this right out there go ahead and pull your stick up and let's read the grade now we're going to find out how high we are so that'll tell us how much we've got to actually cut down How are we looking? We're at uh, six feet three and a quarter of an inch. Okay, so we are one half inch higher from this point to that point, right? So how much grade do we got to cut down to achieve our desired grade? We're a half inch high and we got to cut two inches below this mark. So two and a half inches? Yep. So, so that kind of gives you an indicator when you're actually running the loader and you're looking and all of a sudden you cut out five inches of material, you'd be like, whoa, that's way too much, Yeah. right? So you, you literally got to cut this much out, but you've got to cut it and blend it over this whole area here and match it all the way up around there and match it over to there. Okay. So uh, is it kind of getting a little clearer how to read these grade rods? Yeah. Okay, good. Cause that was the goal was just to help you understand uh, how to do it. But let's get on to the next part of this job. You got the basics down to this, but now we've got more to do. You can leave the grade rod set right up because you're gonna need it. All right. right? Just keep it, keep it out of the way in a nice tucked away spot. All right, so here's the gist of it, you guys. Some of you have asked me to put together training videos for your crews. Something that you could sit down and put a noob in front of, and by the time they're done watching it, they'd have a vague idea of what to do out on the job site. And this was my attempt today to pull that off. If this video has helped you out, let me know in the comments down below, but also tell me what's the next training video you would like to see. Now remember, there's a part two to this where we actually test Alex out and we see how he does. But that doesn't mean I can't make more training videos down the road. So you tell me, is there something that you would like me to make so that you could just literally set brand new guys down in front of and by the time they're done would have a better understanding of it so you don't have to waste your time trying to figure out how to teach them to do it? Comment down below and I'll start working on some of that for you guys. God bless you guys. Go get them. And whatever you do, I hope you have an awesome day and make sure you stick around because part two is coming down the pipeline.
See you on the next one. Oh, hey, and you do me a favor. I don't know why, but for some reason, my videos have not been getting played to my audience. So if you could hit the share button, maybe this will get YouTube to start playing my videos to more people. I don't know. You tell me why if you've been able to see my videos or not, because a lot of people are saying they're not finding them. So let me know about that in the comments down below and check out these other two videos right here and here. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. Now, we'll see you on the next one. God bless and go get them.